here's the skincare problem. This is probably gonna get me in trouble, but DNA repair enzymes versus growth factors versus exosomes. What actually belongs in your skincare? Now, if you've ever thought, what even are these things and should they be on my face, then this video is for you. I'm gonna walk you through what science says, which ones actually earn a place in my routine and which one of these three doesn't. So let's go through it really quickly. So first of all, DNA repair enzymes. They are specialized enzymes that help to correct UV induced DNA damage in our skin cells. So they are damage fixers and we're collecting damage all day long, every day, and we have been our entire life. Like 10,000 hits of damage per skin cell every single day. When we say DNA damage, think of all of the years your skin spent soaking up sunshine, long beach days, walking the dog, or even just driving with your left arm out in the sun. UV rays don't just give us freckles, and lines, they actually scramble the DNA inside our skin cells. That can show up as fine lines and crepiness because skin is not repairing as quickly as it used to. It can show up as uneven pigmentation or sunspots, which hello, I have a little bit of those myself. It can show up as broken capillaries and thinning skin so that redness is more obvious. It can show up as precancerous spots, something called actinic keratosis that pop up after decades of sun exposure. Okay, so here's where DNA repair enzymes come in. These are special proteins that help your skin fix the cellular typos, if you will, caused by UV light. So UV light has come in, it's scrambled up, it's messed with the DNA, DNA repair enzymes can go in and help to fix. They're kind of like an autocorrect. All right, so sticking with that theme, the typos and the autocorrect, photolyase. That is the DNA repair enzyme that is activated by light. You can think of that one like um, a spell check for UV damage. So it targets one of the most common DNA errors and it repairs it, but only when it's activated by visible light. Now it's doing that in the moment. So it is literally a spell check autocorrect in the moment. It's a wonderful damage fixer right away. Now there are other DNA repair enzymes that do not require light to go to work and do a bunch of fixing of those typos. They're a little bit slow Lower, they're like the proofreader who came in afterwards and went back and fixed some things later, taking their time to check. Now, why liposomes matter, those tiny fat bubbles that protect the enzyme and help it to slip past the skin barrier so that the enzyme just isn't sitting on top, they matter because obviously we need the DNA repair enzymes to get in and go to work. So it's really important that if you choose a DNA repair enzyme product, that it is encapsulated in a liposome. Now, this is not Botox in a bottle. This is not going to give you overnight results. They're kind of like long game protection. So you're lowering your load of DNA mutations that would otherwise add up to visible aging and higher skin cancer risk. It's, it's about boosting your skin's immunity. All of these things to me are really hard to assess in the moment. We like products that are going to erase the signs of aging. We want to see that that hyperpigmentation cleared up in just two weeks or something like that. DNA repair enzymes are more that protection plan. They're the thing that's going to help us going forward. They are the thing that's going to prevent new things from happening. So how do you judge if something never actually happened? How do you say, oh, I got results because I didn't get that skin cancer? That's a really tough one to wrap our brain around. It's kind of like wearing SPF. We don't necessarily see the results of wearing SPF. The results are that we don't get some of the things that we don't want. We don't get age spots necessarily. We protect ourselves so that we don't age as quickly or we slow down the accelerated aging process that can happen when we're exposed to too much sun. That's a preventative and it's really hard to put your finger on results. Now listen, it's not about looking 25 again. It is not. It is about keeping your skin functioning like its younger self for as long as possible. Okay, so if DNA repair enzymes are your skin's repair crew, then growth factors are the project managers. They don't fix DNA damage directly, 
but they do tell your skin cells what to do. So growth factors are signaling proteins or peptides that your body naturally makes. They send messages to our fibroblasts. Those are the cells that build collagen and build elastin. They send messages to our keratinocytes. Those are your epidermal cells and even immune cells to help coordinate the indirect repair. And the result is more organized collagen, it's firmer skin and it's better overall structure. So what do they do in skincare? Now in topical products, growth factors are usually bioengineered peptides created in a lab to mimic natural ones or they're harvested from cultured cells. So when you apply them to the skin, they act like little nudges to your fibroblasts. Make more collagen here, produce more elastin over there, or lay down more glycosaminoglycans our skin's natural water holding molecules for some plumpness. And the effect is not instant, but over time, those little nudges can translate into improvement in wrinkles, improvement in texture, elasticity, and even skin thickness, which is really important as we get older. There are clinical studies, including split face trials, where one half of the face gets the growth factor serum and the other half doesn't. These have shown that growth factors can soften fine lines, they can smooth skin texture. Um, it's modest improvements, but they're measurable and that's really cool. And you can also get an increase in dermal thickness. I mean, there's definitely some really good things that can come from applying topical growth factors. So you can get overall healthier looking skin. Now again, this one is also not Botox. This one is also not surgery, but I hear it all the time how much people love growth factors. Now, many of us over 45 notice that our skin feels thinner, it heals more slowly, and it just doesn't bounce back like it used to. And that is because our natural growth factor signaling has slowed way down. By reintroducing those signals topically, we're essentially reminding our skin how to behave more youthfully. All right, so that's growth factors. I hope that that makes a little bit of sense in the differentiation. Personally, I think that growth factors and DNA repair enzymes go hand in hand. You have the one that is correcting old damage and like your insurance policy, then you have the other one that is actively telling your cells how to behave more youthfully. The one, the DNA repair enzymes, is setting the stage for the other, the growth factors, to do its best work. So to me, they're like peanut butter and jelly, unless you have a peanut allergy. Okay, so before we wrap up, we need to talk about exosomes. They're a relative newcomer in skincare. They're not new because they are actually in our body, but they are a relative newcomer. Now, here's the deal. They are tiny messenger bubbles that our cells naturally release to communicate with each other. Now, in biology, they are incredibly exciting because they carry proteins, they carry lipids, they carry genetic material that can tell other cells how to behave. So think of them like little text messages that one cell can send to another cell. They are the messages. Now, here's the skincare problem. This is probably gonna get me in trouble, but exosomes are fragile and they are not designed to sit on a shelf for months in a jar or a pump bottle. Now, most cosmetic brands try to make them stable by freeze drying them. That's also called lyophilizing. Lyophilizing means freeze drying. Now, on paper, this sounds great. Remove the water, keep the structure. But in practice, freeze drying actually ruptures the exosomes or often ruptures the exosomes. It probably doesn't happen every single time. But basically when it does that, it leaves behind little more than cellular debris. Now, if that happens, you are no longer applying intact bioactive exosomes. You are applying their shattered insides, which are unlikely to have the same signaling power. And here's the kicker. Some brands are charging hundreds and hundreds of dollars for these products. And the real issue isn't just the science. It's that you may be paying luxury pricing for what is essentially cellular junk. Sometimes I think even brands don't themselves realize that their freeze drying process is destroying the very thing that they are selling. So 
that's not good. And I feel like until we can confirm that the freeze drying doesn't destroy the exosome, you might still be getting some good stuff out of you know the cellular debris, you might be, but what you're not getting is intact exosomes. And that's a big di differentiation. I just feel like we are very early in the topical exosome game to pay those prices. Now here's the deal, I am somebody who will pay for something and test it out even if I'm not 100% sure that the science lines up. I am a hopeful skincare junkie. If something looks like it could potentially be really good, I am the person who will buy it and who will try it and hope that I'm the one that discovers something that works even though there's not enough science yet. So I wanna put that out there, but this is one of those areas where the more I have studied this in the last 12 months, the more you may have noticed, I haven't done a lot of talking about exosomes on this channel because exosomes in topical skincare, when it has to be on a shelf, is not ready. It's not ready for prime time yet. I just don't think so. Now there's something that's really important to differentiate. If you buy exosomes that are frozen, that come to you on ice, that you then put in your freezer, and when you want to use them, you thaw them and you use them like with a treatment. Maybe they use them after your laser treatment, something like that. That's different. That is freezing the exosomes. So that's different. That's not lyophilizing an exosome. So, and I know that that's confusing, but most people aren't buying those exosomes that are coming on ice and then going in the freezer, but that's a different thing. And those are absolutely viable, you know, good exosomes. I'm gonna put in the description box a couple of things that you can ask a brand for to verify that they can prove that they have intact exosomes in their products. There is a kind of like a microscopic test that can show that exosomes are intact and a brand can get a certificate of authenticity or a certificate that can prove that. And I think a lot of the brands that are in like medical research and stuff like that, they will do that, but their stuff isn't freeze dried. They can prove intact exosomes because they didn't freeze dry them and destroy them. So I just think, I know that this is gonna be controversial. I know that there are gonna be people who have used this or that and say they got good results. And there are products on the market that have exosomes in them that otherwise have a really amazing formula. And so that product's probably still really good. I still wouldn't pay two or $300 or more for something because it has exosomes when the actual exosomes in there are probably not even viable. I hope that all makes sense. So that's my hot take on exosomes now. And this has really been an evolving opinion of mine. And I will be the first to line up for a skincare product that can prove the exosomes are intact because I 100% believe in the benefit of exosomes, 100% believe in that. You just have to actually have intact exosomes. I hope that this was informative. I hope that it kind of cleared up the difference between DNA repair enzymes and growth factors because they are definitely two very different things. One is a repair and maintenance man and the other one is the um, forewoman of the job. She's the one directing every everything what to do and how to do it. They are two definitely different things and they're both things that I think have positive impact on our skincare. Now, if I had to choose, I would choose DNA repair enzymes every day, full stop, no doubt. But I do think that growth factors are one of those things that are really exciting in skincare and many people tell me how they get amazing results from their growth factor products. I'm gonna list down below my favorites. I am also going to list my playlist on DNA repair enzymes. I highly recommend that you watch it. Not only do I have some amazing videos with Dr. Daniel Roche, he is the guy when it comes to DNA repair enzymes. He's been in it since the beginning. He is this fascinating doctor that 
that the talks that I had with him were so educational and inspiring. I'm also gonna link, I have a DNA Repair Enzyme All-Star video where I list and uh, talk about all different price points of DNA Repair Enzymes and different products from different brands. I think that video it could be really, really helpful. And I'll also link my latest video on uh, the new Dermatology Growth Factor Serum because it's a very, very interesting new launch and I had a first look at it and that video is definitely giving out information and a real first impression on the product. But I think it's a great way to gather a little bit of information about a new growth factor on the market. Leave your questions down below. I will do my best to answer them. I hope you have the most wonderful day and I'll talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.